Today, we are going to review my own portfolio. And the first question is, how often should you do that? The simple answer, not too often. Because reviewing, reviewing your portfolio costs time and money. And that's not worth it. Because stocks don't have an expiry date. They don't rot. They don't disappear. As a matter of fact, in most banks, they don't even have maintenance costs. I started investing in 2015. That's five years ago. And this is my first portfolio review. Is that a problem? Not, because all the stocks did what they should do. They provided a return for me. So let's get going. Do you remember the King's Principle of Portfolio Review? It's diversification versus the time it takes to look after your portfolio. I have an additional problem. I decided to open a new portfolio for each investment season that I documented on the website. So I have four portfolios now, and that's definitely too much. I did this at the beginning because I thought I want to differentiate between portfolios of good times and portfolios of bad times, but the last four years were all the same. It all went up. You know, the stock markets were pretty smooth. What I'm doing now is I'm putting together the first and the second season into one portfolio and the third and fourth season into a second portfolio to make it a little easier. And now you probably ask yourself, how many portfolios do you need? Actually, you only need one portfolio. You don't need more. There is one exception. If you have different saving purposes. For instance, if you save for college and you save for retirement, then these two purposes have different lifespans. It takes a lot longer until you retire. It's much quicker until you have to study or your kids have to study. That means you want to run different risk profiles. And if you want to run, if you want to run different risk profiles, you should have several portfolios. But that's the only reason. So let's look at the details of my portfolio. I use the Google Sheet that we provided Obermott for that purpose, and I list all the stocks I have in that Google Sheet. And I realize I have 85 stocks. That's a lot. Each portfolio contains 200,000 francs of value, roughly. So everything below 2,000 francs is less than 1%. And the first thing I decide is to look at all the stocks where I have a holding of less than 2,000 francs. These are six stocks. The first two stocks are, have bankruptcy issues. Debenhams in the UK had a fraud case, and my burger in Switzerland had very stiff competition from the Chinese. I decide to get rid of them, too difficult to handle. That leaves me with four stocks where I have less than 2,000 francs invested. The first one, G4S is a UK company, and there I made a mistake that may happen to you too. UK stocks are typically quoted in pence and not pounds, and I thought it was pounds and you know, calculated the number of stocks I wanted to buy based on pounds. And I ended up with just 1% of what I wanted to buy. So this stock is now really tiny in my portfolio and I have to decide what to do. And the remaining three stocks are spin-outs. You get spin-outs for free if you're a shareholder, if you hold the mother company. I got Seekonomy from Metro in Germany, Alcon from Novartis in Switzerland, and I got uh, from Atlas Copco, I think it's a Swedish conglomerate, the company called Epiroc. With those four companies, I now have to decide what to do, and I will do that over the next four videos. So remember, what did I do? First, I reduced the number of portfolios, because less portfolios are less work. Then I decided to identify the companies where I just have a too small holding, and I decided to look at those. And third, probably most importantly, I did it very rarely. I did it only after almost five years. Don't do it too often, never more than once a year. 